I now call to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, June 16, 2015 at 6.30. Roll call. Mayor Archie. Here. Vice Mayor Larson. Here. Commissioner Teo Penny. Here. Commissioner Banther is absent and excused. Commissioner Sieber. Here. Tonight's invocation will be given by Reverend Bob Russell of uh, Family of Faith Church. Will everyone stand? Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance following. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come together tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we gather here in the chambers of our great city hall, we ask that you provide wisdom and leadership towards the needs of our fair city, Tarpon Springs. We ask that you bless those proceedings. We ask that you bless those providing patience to those seeking guidance and information. May you further bless those who may provide services, city engineers, city maintenance, city hall staff, water department, waste removal, environmental department, and of course, our first responders, our police force, our fire department, and paramedics. Heavenly Father, each time I honor and bring forth the word of our Lord here, there always seems to be some type of tragedy. Sadly, tonight, it's no different. Tonight, 13 families' lives will never be the same. 13 young people travel to our country for what they thought would be the adventure of their lives. Today, five have died. Eight are in very serious condition. Father, please comfort these families as they mourn the loss of the loved ones, children, and that. Please bless and keep members of our armed forces, and especially those families breathing the total sacrifice giving to protect the freedoms that we take for granted. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We would Mayor, now, Mayor, if we could note, um, tonight will be the first meeting that we will be live streaming. So hopefully, as we are testing it, um, we are live availability from our website, from our Facebook site. So we've done a sample from the from the planning and zoning meeting last night and the code enforcement meeting last Thursday. So hopefully we are millions are watching. We are live and millions are watching uh, we'll right. for the first time tonight. So <laughs> thank you. I will now go to public comments on any item that will not be discussed this evening. Seeing none, we will uh, go to our proclamation and the first is uh, Rotary Day. <clears throat> Excuse me. This proclamation reads, City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, where Rotary International was founded on February 23, 1905 in Chicago, Illinois and is the world's first and one of the largest nonprofit service organizations. Whereas the Rotary Club of Tarpon Springs was established in 1927, and whereas there are over 1.2 million Rotary Club members comprised of professional and business leaders in over 33,000 clubs in 200 countries and geographic areas. And whereas the Rotary motto, service above self, inspires members to provide humanitarian service, encourage high ethical standards, and promote goodwill and peace in the world. And whereas the Rotary Club of Tarpon Springs supports programs that strengthen the capacity of our community to improve the quality of life in Tarpon Springs. Whereas the Rotary Club of Tarpon Springs actively sponsors service projects that address such critical issues as poverty, health, hunger, illiteracy, and the environment in Tarpon Springs. Whereas all citizens in Tarpon Springs should join me in recognizing the Rotary Club of Tarpon Springs for its 88 years of service to improving the human condition in our community. Now, therefore, I, David O. Archie, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, do hereby proclaim June 16, 2015, as Tarpon Springs Rotary Day. I'm not sure if Carrie or Ms. Belivis, you both can come.
definitely thank Rotary for all that they do to help Tarpon be a better place. <clears throat> the next uh, item that we have is item number two, is recognition of Sheriff uh, Gauteri, and this will be done by our own chief. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, Board of Commissioners. Um, as you know, December 21st, 2014 was our darkest hour. One of our, one of TSPD's finest was killed in the line of duty. And we couldn't have done, that, done what we did without the help and assistance from a bunch of agencies and organizations. But one agency really stands out here that, that really stepped up and, and really helped us. And that's the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department and uh, Sheriff Bob Gualteri. Sheriff, if you could please come up. Uh, on that night, um, Sheriff came up with his command staff and all his people, and he looked at me and goes, what do you want? And I looked at him, and I started thinking in my mind, I've been doing this for a long time. We're a small agency. There's no way we can take this criminal investigation. There's too much going on. We have a family we have to take care of. We have an officer we have to honor. We have officers that have been devastated by this event, a whole department and community. So I looked at him and I said, can you do the criminal investigation, take the whole thing? And he looked at me and said, no problem. And, and what really struck me during this whole thing was, you know, there's something called duty. You know, we all do that. We have the badge. We do our duty. But Sheriff Gualteri did something else. He put his heart into it. And everybody in TSPD saw that. It wasn't just about his duty. He really put his heart into it and stepped up and was there through this tragic event through the whole time, helping us, helping the family, helping our agency to the point where his agency even covered our city while we went to the funeral so all of our officers can grieve. So, you know, with that, Sheriff, I, I can't say enough, but, but in our own way, um, we wanted to kind of honor you and the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department. Um, the first thing I have here is a plaque, and it says, in appreciation to Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, presented recognition of your generosity, support, and countless hours given to the Tarpon Springs Police Department following the line of duty death of Officer Charles R. Kondak, Jr. Thank you, Chief Robert Cochin. Thank you. Thank you so Appreciate much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. The other one we have is for you personally. Um, and this plaque reads, in appreciation of Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gualteri, presented in recognition of your generosity, support, and countless hours given to the Tarpon Springs Police Department following the line of duty death of Officer Charles R. Kondak, Jr. Thank you, Chief Robert Cochin. Yeah. Thank so you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I have one other small thing, but it's a, it's a challenge coin, and I believe um, several people are involved in this, but some of our officers can be really creative, and they design this, and I left one for all the commissioners and the city uh, attorney or city manager clerk, but uh, this is a, ch a challenge coin that honors Charlie, and um, you know, I want you to have it, and if anyone else wants it, your command staff, just let me know. We have, we have some extra. Well, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you very much. If, if, you, if you want to say anything, please. Well. Please. You know, it, it's one of those things that, as we know, you know, words are tough and still tough, you know, now six months later. Um, it was a tough time, tough night, a uh, tough period of time, uh, but no tougher than for the family. Um, we wouldn't have had it any other way. Uh, it wasn't just something that it was our privilege, uh, our honor to be here and to help, to help Chief Coach and to help the city of Tarpon Springs. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, and there isn't anything that we wouldn't have done and still wouldn't do uh, to help out any other law enforcement member of our family. And um, we are glad to do it. And certainly appreciate you uh, pausing to recognize us, but uh, it, 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 unnecessary, but I appreciate it because that's what we're here for. And it is a family, it is a brotherhood, sisterhood. And, uh, we'll be here forever uh, for everybody in Tarpon Springs and throughout the county. And uh, again, thank you very much. I, I'm humbled by it. There's a lot of people who put forth a lot of effort. I'll be sure to share this uh, with everybody within the sheriff's office uh, who contributed significantly to uh, bringing this to a, a, the conclusion we wanted, which was the person arrested and, and put in jail. So, uh, but I, I thank you very much, Chief, uh, for the for the recognition and. Uh, we're here for you then, and we'll be here for you for the future, and just like I know you'd be there for us. So I uh, appreciate it. And, and thank you, Mayor, and uh, members of the City Commission for um, the recognition of the people of the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. So uh, my, my thanks. Thank 
once again, we really appreciate uh, our officers and, and Officer Condack's wife and daughter for being here. It means a lot to show our support. You know, we, we can't forget what they did for us. So once again, Sheriff, thank you. And I, I know you have to go there, Sheriff, but before you go, I just want to let you know on behalf of the city and myself personally that we do thank you. Uh, you did uh, do more than what you had to do, and, and your officers too, and what the chief said about even serving the city of Tarpon while our officers went to the funeral was things that you really didn't have to do, but you wanted to do. And my thoughts is always that, you know, within any great organization, the leadership at the top is the most important, even though I know that you wasn't doing all of the work, but it was under your guidance that those men and women stepped forward for our citizens. So I just want to tell you personally that I thank you on behalf of the city of Tarpon and we thank all of the uh, men and women that actually served during that process that we really appreciated. No, Chief didn't have to do it. I know that was something that he talked to me a, a while ago. He wanted to do because he wanted you to know and those officers know that we truly appreciated what was uh, uh, happened on behalf of us. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And I'll pass it on. Thank you. Are there any uh, public comments on this item? With that, we'll go to our consent agenda. And since we're doing something new, I guess I'll do something new too. Is that um, I'll just ask is there any item on the consent agenda that anyone would like uh, further uh, information about? If not, then Chair will entertain a motion. Move so moved. Second. <clears throat> uh, any public comments on the uh, consent agenda? Roll call. Mr. Seaberg? Yes. Mr. Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Next, we go to special consent item number 12, Administrative Settlement of Code Enforcement Lean, 417 Pineapple Street. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commissioners, this uh, request concerns a property at 417 Pineapple Street. This actually emanates not from a request made by the, through the ordinary channels, but as a result of litigation. This is a completed foreclosure. Um, you've got the memorandum dated June 8, 2015 from uh, Tom Trask. The property owner, in order to clear his title, has uh, offered the city $2,500 to do that rather than go through the uh, hassle and expense of a quiet title action. Uh, based on that, I recommend uh, approval of that settlement in the amount of $2,500. Happy to answer any questions that you have. Do anyone have uh, any questions for the attorney? None. Chair will entertain a motion. Move to settle for $2,500. Second. With that, we'll go to roll call. Mr. Sieber? Yes. Mr. Terrapini? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Next, we have ordinance and resolutions. Item number 13, ordinance 2015-13, adoption of 2014 Florida Building Code, and this is second read. Ordinance 2015-13, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending Chapter 6 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tarpon Springs by amending 6-1 to adopt the 2014 Florida Building Code, building the 2014 Florida Building Code residential, the 2014 Florida Building Code existing building, the 2014 Florida Building Code energy conservation, the 2014 Florida Building Code accessibility, the 2014 Florida Building Code plumbing, the 2014 Florida Building Code mechanical, 2014 Florida Building Code Fuel Gas, 2014 Florida Building Code 5th Edition, Test Protocols for High Velocity Hurricane Zones, the National Electrical Code and FPA 70, 2011 Edition, by amending the 2010 Florida Building Code Chapter 1 Administration, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. Second reading of Ordinance 2015-13 by title only. The ordinance was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on June 5, 2015. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion then. Move for approval. Second. Any uh, public comments on this item? Roll call. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Item number uh, 14 is Ordinance 2015 15, Adoption of Florida Fire Prevention Code, 5th edition, and this is uh, first read. 
Ordinance 2015-15, an ordinance of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending Section 7-12 of the Code of Ordinances to provide for adoption of the Florida Fire Prevention Code and providing for an effective date. That's the first reading of Ordinance 2015-15 by title only. Second reading will be held on July 7, 2015, and the ordinance will be published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on June 26, 2015. <clears throat> I think we have Rick Kenny. Are you here to do this for the... Right up there. Can you want to just explain briefly what this is and uh, the process? Yes, I'm Rick Kenny, uh, Captain Fire Marshal, uh, City of Tarpon Springs. This is the uh, Florida Fire Code. It's, uh, it's a national code, but it's a Florida edition. That's the uh, 2012 edition that renews every three years. And uh, what it does, it spells out the fire code requirements of the, uh, pretty much of the establishment buildings and stuff like that, commercial structures. And the NFP 101 is the life safety code, which pertains to life safety issues in the same. Anyone need any further information? If not, Chair will entertain a motion of approval. Second. Is there any public comments on this item? Roll call. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Tirapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the next item we have is miscellaneous, and that's item number 16, likes to encroach. Mr. Mayor, we have an item, um, sorry, item 15. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. No worries. Uh, item 15 is ordinance 2015-14, land development code amendments providing for administrative review of alcohol license permits. Ordinance 2015-14, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending Appendix A, Comprehensive Zoning and Land Development Code. Article 4, Special Regulations, Section 52. Alcoholic beverages by providing for administrative review and issuance of conditional use permits, providing for repeal of ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the Land Development Code of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, and providing for the effective date of this ordinance. It's the first reading of Ordinance 2015-14 by title only. Second reading will be held on July 7, 2015. Uh, ordinance published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on May 29, 2015, and June 26, 2015. Good evening. Heather Erler for uh, the Planning Department, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, there should be an addendum that um, was uh, added to the staff report, and that's basically the um, what happened last night at the Planning and Zoning Board outlined for you. But basically this application is a request to allow for administrative review of alcoholic beverage licenses. It would continue to still be a conditional use. It would meet the same criteria. However, we are amending exactly what's required for to be submitted um, as part of that application request to make it a little bit more stronger in what we get. So we actually get a consistent information. And at the Planning and Zoning Board um, last night, the, they recommended approval to you of the changes, 3-1, uh, um, with this. And basically, they're, they were very pleased to see this because they're also happy to see that we're working to streamline planning the permitting process as much as possible for folks to start new businesses in the city. Um, there were some concerns um, from one particular member, and they did have some interest in discussing the appeal process. Essentially, this is an administrative process um, under this ordinance, and the appeal process that's laid out in our existing land development code, <coughs> section 215, any appeals that would come in would be heard by the Board of Adjustment under those provisions. So there is an appeal process to administrative decisions of any kind. This would be one of those types of administrative decisions. So with that, staff is recommending approval, and so is the Planning board, planning and Zoning Board, and I can answer any questions that you may have. The only one that I have, and uh, I'm happy, I know that uh, some uh, individuals have talked about streamlining this. Uh, this is the unthinkable, but what happens if planning and the city manager disagree? That's a good I, question. I, you know, I know that that should not happen, Ordinarily, but I mean, even with us, I mean, we're a body, but you know, we don't always agree. And but there is an odd number, so that uh, you know, uh, majority prevails. I know that 
He might be ranking higher. <laughs> but I, I, that's just the <laughs> thought that came to my mind is that what happens in those cases, if they ever happen, you know, to it. That's an excellent question, and I don't know that we've actually really addressed that. What happens if internally staff doesn't necessarily agree with the process? What then happens? Um, essentially, whatever decision would be rendered, the applicant would have the ability to appeal that decision through the appeal process. So they could still have their a board evaluate whether or not their conditional use is valid if they're not actually granted their um, license. So. It's not really addressed in these changes, but it is something that we could look at if there's an interest by the board of doing that. I just thought about that. I know that I think for us is that if there's a tie, then it, it fails. So mm -hmm. I, I would assume that <laughs> if it's a tie, it's, it's a denial. Yeah. Well, that's specifically addressed by, by your rules of procedure. I think that uh, <clears throat> in the event of disagreement among administrative staff, there would need to be a decision made, I would suggest to you, by the, probably by the higher ranking member of the agree. staff, and then, as Ms. Erweiler said, there is an appeal process already in place. That's what I would say, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, my thoughts is that <laughs> that's the case, then the, the higher ranking person should just, the only person named me that need to be there. Uh, yes, sir, Vice I, No, I, I simply wanted to congratulate staff, including Ms. Erwiller. Uh, I, I think this is uh, important, an important ordinance, and we need to move forward with this. Oh, Commissioner Tarpan. Thank you. Uh, just another comment, no, no question. I also wanted to commend staff. Um, I look back in the backup, and I see, I, I believe it was uh, an initiative by um, Karen Lemons, the Economic Development Director, that in 2013 there was a business survey conducted, and a lot of the businesses talked about streamlining. So just wanted to commend you on actually uh, putting forth the effort to actually do that and bring it to this board. So thank I'd you. love to say that it was all me. I'm just standing up here answering the questions. <laughs> but I do appreciate the accolades. That's great. Thank you. And again, going back to the other, I don't, I mean, really, it's one of those things, and we've talked about this on some of the other situations where we've talked about administrative doing. I mean, there's a set of guidelines. I guess there could be a circumstance where we disagree, but a measurement, I don't see how we disagree. Yeah. The provisions of this, of when you grant it, I don't see a, a disagreement unless there's some semantic of, of inches and feet or things. So this is one of those circumstances where it's really, if it's laid out and they meet the criteria set down, which is pretty clear criteria, then it should go through instead of having to go to a planning zoning meeting and then go to the commission meeting. And sometimes time and opening, as you know, from that business survey is important. So while in other cases, if we move on with some of Ms. Lemon's others, we'll look at that about any conflicts. But this is kind of one that if you meet the guidelines, which are pretty clear, there shouldn't be any disagreement of, of what they are. And so I don't see any problems in that aspect either. Move approval. No, no, no. Comment. No, I also I agree. I want to thank you guys, and this is just the first process of streamlining, I think, in in this department. And as a business owner, I, I had my own experiences with with the time and time is money for business mm -hmm. owners. So I appreciate this. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And just a note, um, we did this back, to which we do in case the reason why, of course, this was delayed with a lot of the situations we had in playing. This was delayed, so that is the reason why. Um, and originally we hadn't even thought of until it was noted to us that it had to go to planning and zoning first. So, you know, this has been a long time coming for Ms. Lemons. So that is the reason why we did, we turned it over for the first reading right after the planning and zoning meeting uh, and brought it back to usually to wait to the next one. But we wanted to get the readings and the process going. I know that's directed to me. Thank you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I, I say, I know that this is one of those, I believe that you talked about, we should look at, uh, in a sense, expedite. So, you know, I thank all of the commissioners for, you know, continuing to move this forward for staff and do it in terms of doing it. Well, since it was the only item the Planning and Zoning Board did ask to do it next month when we did it, we, we thanked the Planning and Zoning for coming for just one item because you know, it had been delayed that, for so long. I, they were, they they know that's on me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Joe will entertain a motion to move approval for approval. Second. <laughs> did we get that? Uh, any public comments in this item? Roll call. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. 
Uh, miscellaneous items is item number 16, license to encroach 902-904, Live Oak. Again, Heather for the planning department. Um, again, this is a license to encroach agreement um, for Live Oak 902-904. Uh, it's a business owner who has a building that basically has a zero lot line and there's no room for additional parking. The buildings were built in 1973 and 1956. So they're old and they predate the zoning code. That being the case, he wants to use a parking lot that was partially paved over an existing right of way that's been used for the parking lot for a number of years. His long-term intention is to acquire additional properties in the area that are vacant and ask for those properties to be converted into a proper parking lot and probably vacate a portion of the right-of-way. Prior to that, he needs to have some time to do that assembly of land. So this is what this application is. It's basically asking for the right to use the area that was, has traditionally been used, but there was no formal process actually ever gone through to issue a license to encroach. So they've been encroaching in the right of way. They're asking to come in and voluntarily go through this process. So it's cleaning up an issue that is outstanding out there. So with that, this information was, has been all prepared and the agreement is attached. And I can answer any questions that you might have. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Tarpan? No question. Uh, I'm okay with the um, application. Uh, but in the future, you prepared the staff report, correct? Correct. In the future, would you include under property information the applicant name? Sure. Thank you. There are no uh, further questions. Chair will entertain a motion. Well, uh, I'm sorry. What what was, M M Commissioner Terrapenny, What I couldn't hear you. What was your in question? The, in the past, uh, Vice Mayor, under property information, we have the applicant's name, and I don't see it there tonight. You know, sometimes it will appear as an LLC or a corporation name or even an individual owner's name, but there's no applicant name. Thank you. Yep. There are no other questions, then uh, Joe will entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. Any public comments on this item? Yeah. Roll call. Yes. Mr. Sieber? Uh, yes. Commissioner Chair Penny? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Uh, item number 17, appeal of historic uh, preservation board decision, 170 Spring Boulevard. Okay. Um, there's actually some samples here that the applicant wanted us to pass around. They're of the actual hardy board, so you can feel the difference, but there's also pat um, brochures in there that kind of show the different types of materials they can have. These are just some samples that it comes in some several different finishes. However, this is a appeal for um, 170 North Spring Boulevard um, to a previous um, certificate of, um, of, no, of decision for certificate of approval for Heritage Preservation Board. And there was a number of, of requirements that they actually had asked for for um, replacing this building. So that being the case, the only issue that's actually being appealed here is the finish for, well, not so much the finish, but the actual product or material that's going to be used on the wood siding. And essentially what the applicant is asking for is the right to use the hardy board Hardy board has been used in houses in this area, matter of fact, on the adjacent property. Um, however, and I basically have prepared all of the information. Their minutes are in here from the previous from the previous meeting for the decision, along with the certificate of approval and the applicant's case. And the applicant can speak specifically to what their request is. But that's really what all that I have as staff for this particular application. If you have questions, I can try to answer. Well, the only question that I had, and I didn't understand, it, I didn't see it in there, is why they said no. <laughs> I said they said no, but I didn't see any real reason. It seemed to me from everything I've done and as far as research is that, you know, this is actually a better material to use in wood, it would last longer, rust that. The drawback to seem like it, 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 it's harder to put up, so I, I assume it takes more time, energy, effort from the, the applicant to do. So I, I didn't understand the why. I understand no, but you know I always look at there should be a reason as to that, and I didn't see that in there. 
and basically I can't really speak to that because the minutes are all that I have from that meeting since I wasn't actually employed by the city when this meeting went on. I don't really know the justification. The minutes are all that I have to build their appeal based on and and that information is not in the minutes why there was a prohibition to the it's not really well defined there um, they just required wood versus hardy board and again the applicant could speak a little bit better to this because he was actually at the meeting so well, he knows why, uh. <laughs> good evening mr. mayor and commissioners thank you my name is David Brandon with Brandon construction in our 33rd year of business here in Pinellas County, and uh, I am the construction manager representing uh, Mr. and Mrs. John Burns. They are the applicant. Um, we're not sure why. Um, we were pretty certain that we would be allowed. We were approved in the, in the site next door, 164 Spring Boulevard, uh, to, to use the Hardy, and um, we expected that that would be the case, and, and this one, and it was just, there was a, uh, I think, um, two of the, the members were absent that night, the attorney was absent that night, and uh, Ms. Monahan made the suggestion that, that we, we be required to use the wood siding. Um, that's not protocol, and, and many, most of our historic preservation districts throughout the country now um, not only have approved Hardy, but they're, they're marketing that they're using Hardy, and they're suggesting that to business owners and private residents that own structures in these districts to use that as a means of a, a, you know, more durability in our exterior maintenance. Uh, there is a study out now. Um, it originated in Mississippi, and this is by the USDA Forest Service. They've produced a table, and they list the siding, like are on these historic homes, if we were to put back pine today, of having a lifespan of less than 10 years, and they don't recommend it for that use. 140 years ago, when these homes were sited, Pine was a different material. Uh, it was a tighter grain, a higher, what we call F sub B, that's a, a bending radius. That's a structural term, which if you look in structural timber tables now, uh, our, our structural allowances for pine materials are far less than they were even 30 years ago. So it's just good prudence to use that. I, I, I felt like this is a process we should come to this board and ask for this appeal because I couldn't in good conscience go out there and put pine siding on a client's home knowing that in less than 10 years they're going to be back doing the same thing again. So we're just trying to create what it says on my website, structures of permanence. Uh, the Burns also should be noted have made significant economic development impacts in the city as, since they purchased their first property there at 164 Spring. Uh, I've uh, just I've, I've watched their decision making. It's always been in the best interest of the neighborhood. And I think that we're making some really nice improvements out there, and respectfully request that uh, you approve this appeal. Thank you. And I'll answer any questions. Uh, oh, Mr. Company, you have questions? Uh, no, no questions. Oh, just a comment and part motion. Yeah, did you want sure. to comment? Yeah, I mean, my my comment would just uh, number one to um, I understand why. I've, People make different decisions. I understand the, that when there's a mix-up on the board, you know, you tend to go in one direction where you may have gone in another direction the previous time. Um, but taking the consideration that the Burns received approval for a, a new construction home next door to this home, and I know that there's been other homes in the historic district and in the area that have been granted approval to use the Hardy Board product, aside from the fact that it's a superior product and all kinds of arguments can be made, I would say that we, uh, as a board, my motion would be to recommend approval uh, for use of this hardware product. Is there a second uh, comment? I, no, I just want to make a comment. Not, I'm not prepared to make a motion or second motion or anything like that, but I, I, I just want to say, um, regardless of the direction that we go tonight, I, I do want to express my appreciation to the work of the advisory boards, and, and I know they take their work seriously, and I don't want them to be frustrated um, by uh, wh whatever it is that we do tonight. I, I, I think after looking at the evidence this evening, it's, it's possible that maybe we should move in a different direction from where that board went, but I, I do want to express my appreciation for the work of the Heritage Preservation Board. And, and as I look for a second, and I'll just say this is that, you know, I respect all the boards and I respect their decisions and I think that you know, they are that, they're advisory boards. The reason I asked why they said no 
is that I think that when you say no, you should base it upon something. And that's what we should look at in terms of our decision. What do they base no on? If they base no on something that's logical, reasonable, has some merit, then I can understand that. But if I, they say no, and from all the research that I did, you know, there's no real difference for its appearance. It's, it's a better product, the rest of that product that we're using in the same area. I, I, I can't see why, you know, <coughs> the, the no vote. But that's just uh, my thoughts in terms of, of, of this situation. But and Commissioner Sidney. Uh Yes, I agree. And, and um, also, I, I do appreciate our boards. But looking at our background uh, materials, there are other instances where we've used that material in town in the historic preservation area. And uh, I did some research. I see that Key West is using uh, for their historic preservation areas. And as you mentioned, other areas are, are doing the same. So I didn't understand the reason for no either. But uh, We were confused. And, and, and to Mr. Terpani's uh, point on April 7th, case number 1416, Hardy siding was approved. And again, on September 8th, case, case number 1449, Hardy siding was approved. So we, we we were pretty sure that wasn't an issue. And we were previously approved in the same district for the house at 164. So it was a little bit of a surprise. But that's that's why we're here tonight. Well, we, we have a motion on the floor. That, uh, I don't know if we got a second. Uh, second. Any uh, public comments on this item? Come forward, state your name and address for the record. Giving up to four minutes. Hi, I'm Vicki Russo, Building Development Supervisor. And I do want to say that the Hardy Board siding does have Florida product approval. It's a durable material. It's a good material. And I am for this material because it will meet the requirements of the Florida Building Code. And that's what I look for when I do my plan review drawings. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other public comments? I missed part of the presentation, but uh, name's Jacob Carr, 146 Cleveland Place. Um, just here in favor of the Hardy Board deciding also. Uh, the property in question tonight is a uh, property. I lived there in the loft uh, two owners ago throughout college and I helped maintain the property. Um, at that time, that was probably 10 years ago or so, that, is, that owner had a lot of issues with the boards rotting continuously around the house. So um, seeing the products that have come out now with Hardy Board, I, I think it's a great aspect to maybe look into as a whole, um, relook at maybe our historic district and maybe look at some of the guidelines to see and include Hardy Board in those guidelines so then something like this in the future won't come back up also. But uh, I'm in favor of it also. Thank you. Thank you. Do another public comment, so roll call. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Thank you. Yes, Mayor. Yes, sir. Just, just a comment, uh, something that Mr. Carr brought up. Um, I don't know what direction, uh, Mr. LaCourse, that we would potentially ask staff to look at in terms of the Hardy Board as a, an approved product within the historic district, uh, but it's certainly something that I think is worthy to look at if we could list that or determine if we want to list that. Um, we've heard from a member of our staff in the building department, so I think that that's probably a wise decision so we don't run into this again. Yes, I agree. Thank you. With that, we go to item number 18, ratification of appointment planning and zoning director. Well, obviously, I didn't expect to be back with you this soon with uh, another recommendation. As most of you know, um, our former director, Steve Carencia, um left Farada State because of an opportunity, a job that his wife couldn't refuse in Arizona. So it left us at the point where we had no director again and uh, principal planner who you've seen tonight who came in and got one week of training and then took over the reins. As we went through the normal process of advertising, look at the advertising and, and looking at the people who were coming in, um, I was able to watch Heather and watch her performance and how she handled things. And again, 
You know, someone who came in for one week, got one week of review from the planning director, and then essentially, again, with the help of, of Karen Lemons, took over and operated the planning. I think she came up with some situations where I was able to see, and I know some of you on this board has been to some things and seen her and how her and Karen work. They've seen her ability to look at the situation and, uh, you know, assist the citizens as well as they can withstand the rules. And it just, as the process was going on to select a new planning director, whoever else I would have got in would have had a bunch of unknowns. And I was sitting here day after day watching the qualities that we would continue to mold, but was well along the way to be able to operate the way you as a commission wanted. You made it very clear about planning, building, and the way you wanted us to operate, to deal with the citizens, to work with people, developer, homeowners. And she, in that very short time, has shown me and I've been able to see that she is a person who can do that. So I would like to give her the opportunity um, and offer her, and I have offered her the job as planning director, and obviously this is a position where I must get ratified by you as the commission, but I think um, the known that I've seen, I think she'll meet all those qualities that you've demanded of me to have in my staff, and I'm confident that she can carry those out from the short time I've seen her and what she did being thrown into a hornet's nest of a position and working together, getting everything going, and, and her and Karen are a dynamic team, and hopefully she'll be able to hire a principal planner and we'll have a full team and we'll be rolling again. So my recommendation is, is for you to ratify my appointment of Heather as the, as the planning director. Mayor, if I could, I'd like to make a motion. Yes, sir. As much as I am offended that the city manager called this a hornet's nest, I, I, I will still make this motion. Uh, I, I move for approval of the agenda item. More specifically, I move for approval of ratification of appointment of Heather Erwiller as planning and zoning director. I'll second. And I just want to say how pleased I am by the city manager's decision and also um, based on what I've seen, uh, how much confidence I have in Heather as well as the planning director. Any further comments? Any public comments? Did roll call. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Uh, welcome aboard again. <laughs> Thanks. If I could just have a couple of minutes. I just want to thank you, um, the commission, mayor, <coughs> city manager and every per staff member here who has just been awesome in my transition here because it was a tough it was a tough road but we're getting it's been a month and we're getting everything on track so it's we're going in the right direction so this has been this is a great time and I'm very excited to be part of the team thank you so much thank you with that uh, that concludes our agenda uh, chief no comment <coughs> Mayor. Thank you. the attorney yeah, very quickly, Mr. Mayor, I've been asked to relay a message to all of you from the Florida League of Cities. Um, last week, weekend before last, I went to the, uh, the Institute for Elected Municipal Officials run by the League down in Fort Lauderdale. That's a training, a weekend training session for newly elected municipal officials. They also operate the uh, Advanced Institute, which some of you may have, may have been to. But at the end of the conference, um, the director of it shared with me that there are 700 newly elected officials in Florida every year, and of those 700, the League of Cities Conference used to draw about five to 600 of those. Obviously, that draws pretty good. Um, they believe it's a result of the economy over the years, but that number has now dwindled to about 100 to 150 every year. They do two sessions, one in October and one in June. Um, and so they asked me to relate to you that if that, uh, um, the, the de decline in attendance was due to any kind of budgetary concerns, et cetera, that hopefully that uh, the cities could find it within their budgets to send those folks who wish to go uh, to enhance their skills as newly elected officials and to uh, uh, see their way clear to do that. Uh, I got a lot out of it. Um, there, there's another session scheduled for Tampa in October, so in as much as travel and hotel and lodging is a concern, and perhaps it can be done on a, um, on a, on a day travel basis. So I think there's a lot of benefit to uh, the collegiality of the uh, of staying with the folks, but 
in any event, they asked me to pass that message on to you, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have about that. Uh, thank you. I don't have any. I think everybody here, I believe, has been to it, so it's uh, whoever might uh, precede us. Is, you know, yeah. It's always been open, I think, to go if people want to. So. We've always come up here. Uh, with that, City Manager? No, again, um, we're, we're trying to get the information out about the live stream meetings. We're very happy um, to begin that. Um, so even if you're at home and you see an item and you got enough time to jump in the car and get down here, you can see what's going on. If you want to come speak, you'll be able to speak. Again, if you look on our website, look at the links. Again, we're, we're also working on converting our website. So we'll be having a new website, but right now it's on the old one. I think it's easy to link. I think today we're linking our Facebook page where you can link right to the live stream. Again, when I was in budget advisory meeting Thursday, I was sitting on my phone watching the, the uh, um, code enforcement meeting below that was going on live down as I was watching that as we were doing the budget advisory meeting upstairs. I was able this morning, obviously I was somewhere else watching something else last night, but I did first thing in the morning, watch the planning and zoning meeting last night this morning so I could see about the one item that we were turning around so and hopefully everybody watched live tonight and can see or if you get home from dinner at nine o'clock you can click on right then and watch this meeting at nine o'clock tonight and, and see you live so I think for our citizens and everything um, it's something we've asked for and uh, gives more accessibility to government and what's going on in a faster frame of time so Next thing coming, we'll be bringing out the website within the next couple of months and uh, with the enhancement we had talked about before in another presentation, we're working very hard on that right now. So something to look forward to. Thank you. Madam Clerk. No comments. Vice Mayor. No comments. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Seaman. No comments. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Uh, I just want to remind everybody about the after or the out of school bash uh, coming up at Sunset Beach. Thank you. You know, uh, I just say to some they might understand, others won't. You know, there's a couple of wildcats in the audience, but they really are just kittens. <laughs> With that, uh, we'll. Uh, the captain would like to say something. Uh, the the chief. Major. The chief. The major. <laughs> major. The captain. Uh, you see, that's what yeah. happened when you don't, don't say it early when you was the chief. Uh, yeah. you want me to comment on this? No, no. We I thought you wanted to comment. No, I was no. asking him oh, Sorry. No, I just said the city attorney was looking into it. Oh, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> you want me to say something? I, I will. We're just to trying to make sure I can see the clock. Yeah, I'm going to ask you. Don't do that. <laughs> we'll uh, adjourn this meeting at uh, 7.18. <laughs> What's going on with that? Okay. Yeah, What's like, that? What in the world? Yeah. Thank you. It, it was. You never know.